Uh, hi. So um, I'm going to talk about the Asian games uh, uh, versus uh, Western games. Um, so for a long time, uh, Asian games and Western games, mainly US, were completely different worlds, uh, and very few games managed to, co to go across between them successfully. Um, for many uh, Western players, uh, uh, Asian games have mechanics that makes no sense. Uh, in addition, the, the screens are overloaded, uh, um, and it's very hard to understand what's going on. A lot of details, very hard to uh, understand. Uh, mostly a kind of a visual assault. Um, but in the past two years, we see a lot of mechanics going from Asian games into uh, uh, Western games, for example, Gacha, uh, and doing so very successfully. And some of the most successful games in the West actually em employ some of these uh, techniques in their games. So um, one of the uh, uh, another things that is very uh, um, uh, relevant to uh, Asian games is that their revenue per players are very, very high. So there's a lot of things that we can look in Asian games and see if we can pick up into uh, Western games. I'm going to just give a few uh, expectations, uh, setting expectations for this talk. This is going to be a technical talk about game design. Uh, it's not going to be a localization uh, session. I'm not going into all these different elements uh, in moving from country to country and censorship and how violence and, and sex are being perceived in each. Um, and I'm also going to generalize a lot. Asian games is already a generalizing term. Uh, Chinese, Japanese, Korean games are different. These are different audiences and they have different preferences. But for the sake of uh, a 20 minutes talk, we're going to generalize. I'm also going to generalize Western audience. So we hope that uh, it will be mostly equal. So who am I? Uh, my name is uh, Ohad. I've been, uh, I've founded and managed uh, three game studios so far. I worked with uh, companies like DreamWorks, um, uh, Lion, uh, Lion Gate, uh, uh, Showtime, and uh, Rovio. Um, but I'm mainly here because uh, the past two years we were working on Pet Monster, which is a, a new Rovio title. Uh, it's their exploration into an uh, action RPG going into the West. Uh, I've been the producer and lead game designer of this game, um, uh, developed by Sidekick. Uh, and uh, as you can see, this is a very different uh, type of game than Angry Birds. It actually have no birds. Uh, so this has been like a, a long journey for us in, in trying to see what actually works, what resonates with Western players and what doesn't and some of the uh, learnings uh, I'm going to present here. I'm not going to actually talk about this game right now. Um, the, uh, I'm going to, the only thing I can say about this game is the uh, detail that uh, Rovio made public in uh, Casual Connect uh, Amsterdam earlier this year, is that this game enjoy uh, about 60% day one retention. So it basically works well with the, with the countries that we uh, are currently uh, soft launching it. it. Uh, it's available, by, by the way, in the UK, in Canada, Israel, Finland, and a few other countries. So if you want to download it and uh, give it a try, you can. Uh, this is, by the way, how it looks for the more advanced players. As you can see, the attacks uh, uh, are becoming cooler as you progress. Uh, I'm not going to show a lot of this game for different reasons, so I'm going to talk in general about Asian games and, and Western games. If you want to uh, catch me afterwards uh, to, uh, to ask me about uh, specifics in this game, uh, just catch me afterwards or, or um, ping me on, on Twitter. So uh, if you're in the business, you probably know this uh, uh, chart. This chart was released by Appenny not long ago uh, that shows that the first time that China actually uh, passes uh, the US in amount of revenue, total revenue they make in, in mobile games. Um, but this, uh, this chart actually hides uh, uh, even more interesting details. Um, this is the chart of top, uh, uh, top downloads per country, top countries by downloads. Uh, I want you to, uh, basically China doesn't have uh, information on the Google Play because uh, in China most of the games are downloaded through third party uh, app stores. Uh, but believe me, China is number one here. Uh, what I want you to, know, to look at is Japan and Korea relative to the US, the amount of downloads they have relative to the US. Why? Because look at how much revenue they make relative to those downloads. 
Okay, again, China is number one. We don't have data from, from Google Play. But look at uh, Japan, just to, to uh, enforce this. Look at Japan, the amount of uh, uh, downloads they generate, and look at the amount of revenue relative to the US. So there's, see, there seems to be in Asia some sort of either cultural changes or game mechanics that actually works extremely well for them, uh, and, we, and we are going to explore. So basically, there's three approaches when you want to take a game from, from uh, Asia to the West or vice versa. You can localize it, um, just get, take the game, translate it to English like uh, uh, they're done here, or translate it to Japanese like with Clash of Clans. Um, you can uh, copy systems, for example, Gacha. This is from a casual game, Crossy Road. This is from uh, Clash Royale, and this is from hardcore a game a, a, a Overwatch that is not even mobile. But these mechanics work very well a, a for monetization. A, and the third a, approach is actually creating a Western version of an Asian game or vice versa. This is a screenshot from a, a Puzzles and Dragons. This is how the game looks a, in the Japanese version. This is a, a Marvel Puzzle Quest. A, it's the same game mechanic, even though they have a different meta game. And this is a battle camp, which has, again, the same mechanic, an even more similar uh, meta game. Um, when you take a game uh, from one region to another, it's very important to understand a lot of uh, elements. One of them is uh, what the genre of the game is. So, uh, for example, uh, as you can see, there, there's different uh, uh, genres uh, that are popular in, in, uh, in the North America and, and in China, for example. As you can see, action and adventure games are like almost 40% in China, um, very different from the, from the US. S social casino is, is almost uh, non-existent in China, even though 6% uh, of the mobile users in China is, uh, is not something to, uh, uh, to overlook. Uh, but these are kind of the approaches. As I said, I'm not going to talk about localization. It's a more complex uh, issue. But we are going to explore the mechanics uh, in, in, uh, in Asian games and the behavior and cultural uh, differences to, to see what can we take and what uh, uh, cannot be transformed because of cultural issues. Okay? So we're going to talk about like eight uh, uh, different uh, game systems. And, but we'll begin with uh, talking about the uh, uh, gameplay behavior. So again, uh, this is a, another warning again of that I'm going to generalize, okay? I'm going to generalize Western players, I'm not going to generalize East, East uh, uh, Asian uh, players, but that's, uh, that's for the, this talk. So uh, in general, Western players uh, play for fun. Um, they seek uh, uh, rules clarity. Um, they um, uh, mostly uh, uh, focus on progress, and uh, they accept that there will be some grinding, but if, the, if it holds the progress for too long, they, they'll quit. They don't, uh, hold for, they don't keep up if there's too much grinding. Uh, Asian players uh, are different. They play to win, mostly. Uh, they expect some rules complexity. Um, they, play to, they, they try to be the most efficient uh, uh, when they play. They focus on efficiency, and they will spend hours in the same region just trying to do it uh, uh, as best as they can. Okay, so it's not about progress, it's about being more efficient. Just to uh, uh, demonstrate uh, uh, the efficiency and rule complexity, this is a, a, a screenshot from a, a Reddit thread uh, talking about the, uh, uh, what's the uh, damage formula in a, a game called uh, uh, Brave Frontier. Uh, this is how the, uh, the players calculated the formula. So first you see it's a very co uh, complicated formula. Uh, for the, if you want, the, there's a link for the, to the thread. It's a very complicated formula just uh, to uh, uh, calculate the damage. And the players took time to actually research it. Okay, they were obsessed about it. And why? Because they want to, do the most to be the most efficient as they can and make the most damage. I'm not sure if a lot of uh, uh, even hardcore uh, Western players will go into to that. Deep. I can tell you that, for example, when we did uh, Pet Monsters, uh, the score calculation is, is actually composed of only three elements. It's mostly about how fast you can complete, I mean, how, how, how fast you can complete uh, the round, so uh, the lowest amount of turns, and your health. Uh, how much uh, health have you lost? And some kind of a bonus for, for uh, advancing. So, you can compare complexities. 
Um, another element that is different in behavior between uh, Western players and Asian players is their perception of luck. Again, generalizing and all. But uh, in, in Western culture, uh, we see it, uh, everyone as, uh, as equal, and we expect uh, luck and things in nature to be uh, uh, neutral. So we basically uh, have an inherent belief that luck is, is uh, uh, evenly distributed. Uh, while in Asia, it's, it's fine that luck is a, is a property, it's, it's a personal uh, trait. You're either a lucky person or not, okay? In the West, uh, you assume that uh, today uh, my friend won, uh, uh, tomorrow I'll win. In Asia, it's fine if someone keeps winning because he's lucky, that's part of who he is. Uh, because of that, in, in Asia, it, they're uh, fine with actually trying to influence luck, okay? For example, paying in order to change your, your, your uh, chances of getting something. It doesn't, consist, it doesn't consider as cheating. It's fine, it's like, it's like leveling the odds. So we went over some uh, differences in behavior, and, and now we're going to touch uh, on some of the mechanics. Uh, first is the character progression. Um, again, I, I'm making sure that it's, uh, it's clear that we're talking about character progression, not player progression. In some games, it's the same. In some games, it's different. Role-playing games uh, and games that you have units, it's, it's different. So Western methodology is very simple. You train, you cast spell, you do stuff, you get uh, experience points for that, and uh, if you get enough experience points for that, you level up, and in the new level, you just repeat in this uh, uh, cycle. Western uh, uh, methodology is a bit different. It consists of, of uh, two cycles. The first one is called fusion, okay? Um, fusion is basically about obtaining units Either, either uh, uh, other characters or items, fusing them into a, a, the character that you want to progress. I'm going to give you a, an example flow in, a, in one of the games. So you have the character that you want to uh, uh, upgrade. Uh, you have to choose uh, several characters to use for fusion. You choose them. These are the characters. These are actual characters. You can play them. These are playable characters. And then there's some kind of animation. You, you, there's some kind of animation where those characters are fused into the character that you want to upgrade. And if you again, and this is where, what gives you uh, XP points, experience points, and this uh, what leads you to level up, okay? And then you repeat until max level. So it, it's not related to how much uh, uh, training you do or, or, or bakes or any actions that you do. It's based on how much things you get. This is a very problematic uh, mechanic for Western, for Western players because it actually consists of using like a character and, and kind of killing it. For Western players, this is uh, the only thing that is, is similar to this is sacrifice. And our culture taught us uh, over time that this is, relates to paganism and bad stuff. So killing creatures in order to advance another creature is, seems like Bad. For example, think of a, 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 if you win like several characters, several puppies, and you have like a very strong bear and you want to advance it. Do you kill those puppies in order to make that bear stronger? That's a horrible c concept for us. And the reason that it actually works, uh, um, actually, if, uh, it, because they're obsessed with uh, efficiency, there's like specific units that you can use to uh, advance specific traits in that character. But the reason it actually works in, in Asia is because they have a different uh, um, philosophy than ours. Their, their religions uh, are, are basically different. Japanese Shinto and, and Chinese Taoism uh, are basically animist uh, religions. They believe in spirits. So there's a lot of spirits. Uh, some of them are, are common and, and very well known and, and, rel and very uh, similar to our concept of deities or gods. And some of them are very local to either a specific region or, or a specific trade. Um, those, uh, uh, those spirits uh, um, basically uh, uh, live in everything, in, in, in trees and in rocks and in dead people. Everything can have a spirit. Uh, they basically can animate uh, uh, living things or, uh, or non-living things. And basically, when you do a fusion, you move those spirits from one body to another, so you don't kill anything. Th those spirits just move, okay? And 
the, the, the previous body is no longer relevant. It doesn't mean it's dead, it's just no longer relevant to the game. Because this mechanic is so uh, um, common in the, in the stories and, and, methodolo and, and, and mythology of Asian people, they don't need to explain it in games. It's just self-explanatory, okay? For Western people, it's, uh, it's more complicated. This is also uh, the, uh, uh, the way that they believe in, uh, this is the uh, elements that they use, the five elements, which is also common in, in games. A secondary uh, progression is evolution. So after you level up a character, you can uh, uh, evolve it into a bigger uh, form and then start the whole process of fusion again, okay? Usually it requires some ev evolution materials and, um, and the thing is that it always provides a visual change, okay? Uh, you mark the evolution stage with stars, so the more stars you have, the rarest the uh, character is. And gacha. So a lot of uh, modern uh, Western players, uh, Western games use it, and it's very, very uh, successful. Gacha is basically vending machines that, that you know from uh, supermarkets when you put a coin in, you flip, and there's a, a ball coming up with a, with a gift. Uh, in, in Asia, it's very common for, uh, to get uh, uh, anime uh, characters. Um, it's very similar to uh, uh, card packs in the West, um, and it's often, often perceived in, in, uh, as a slots machine here in the, in the West. Um, these are the characters that are, are, are given. Um, but it's not exactly the same. In slots, for example, in the Western, uh, Western concept of slots, you play, you try to get the biggest win, you get some small wins to keep you going, but generally most of the spins get you no rewards. In gacha, it's different. You try to get the rarest item, and uh, any item that you get is basically beneficial, because even if you don't need it, you can use it for fusion. Okay, so it, it helps you to advance the, the, the characters that you want. There's different ways to do the gacha right, but the, the most important thing is diversity. You need a lot, of, a, a lot of items, a lot of units in order for it to succeed. Um, uh, basically, um, okay, so it's a lot of units. Uh, what you can do is use the same visuals, uh, same uh, um, content, same properties, but different visuals to give players a, a feeling that there's more uh, options. Um, another thing uh, that is required, you know, if you want to do a gacha successfully, is run different machines in the same game. So the first one should be like some, something simple with uh, soft currency that gives simple units. Uh, the second one needs to be a premium one. It has to guarantee a better minimum than what you get in the previous one. That's why you want to play it. It guarantees a better minimum. And, uh, you can have another machine that gives special units that are not part of the uh, regular premium gacha. This is the way they implemented it in Clash Royale. Uh, these are what the uh, game, uh, what the players can buy, and this is basically the details. As you can see, uh, the bigger the one you get, it promises you more epic uh, cards or uh, uh, more special cards and more uh, currency that you get. Um, another, uh, some stuff that you need to know if you want, you, you do gacha. First thing, game design needs to be different. The level design needs to be different because you need to remember that, for example, in the first session, you have a player that puts in 100 bucks and play the premium gacha and gets all really, a high, a, a really strong characters and he goes into the initial levels. And you have a player that didn't pay anything and he goes into the initial levels. Th both players need to have fun in the game, especially the guy that just bought like a lot of the uh, strong pets. Uh, uh, that bought a lot of the strong pets. So what you need to do is make sure that your levels uh, can be dynamically balanced based of, on the uh, strength of the team that goes in. Refresh the gacha uh, um, uh, periodically. This will get people to play it uh, more often and try to get uh, uh, new stuff. And try different variations of gacha, um, uh, either boxed or, or friends for, for virality. So should you do gacha? Uh, basically, just to do a, a, a good gacha, you need to know if, if your game fits gacha. There's three elements in the DNA of a game. There's the player skill, the unit skill, and luck. Okay, this is kind of a DNA of the game. Uh, if you have this DNA, this is a, a game that fits esports. It's based on player skill. Uh, this uh, game is a casino game, and this is the right DNA for a gacha game. It's a game that is based mostly on a, a, uh, unit power. 
Um, I'm going to cover two other uh, elements very, very quickly. So autoplay, which is something that doesn't work at all in the West. It's basically a button that allows you to, uh, to click on auto and the game just play itself. Very common in the East, never understood in the West. This is mostly to reduce a, a, a grinding fatigue in, in the East. Uh, as you can see, you can even have a, a, a settings to how to, uh, to play the uh, autoplay. Another thing that doesn't work well in the, uh, in the West is play to win. It's, very f it's, uh, it's uh, publicly acceptable in the East that you, uh, you pay in order to get uh, better stuff. Uh, and uh, it's very common, player, uh, uh, Western players see it as cheating and um, very, very vocal against it. Um, uh, Asian players uh, that uh, pay um, uh, expect a very, very good uh, customer service. Western players expect it even if they're not paying. Uh, there are a few other, other elements, I won't touch them. But if you want to catch me, um, just uh, grab me afterwards uh, later on. Okay? Thank you very much. Hi. Uh, Hi. So you said uh, that you should uh, dynamically adjust the difficulty based on a uh, player if he's paying or not. Mm -hmm. But let's say the, somebody plays the first level, uh, and after the first level, he buys a bunch of monsters, and he goes into the second level. Uh, if you dynamically adjust the difficulty to be basically the same, if to if he, if he was not paying, so uh, he won't feel the, the value of uh, the purchase that he just did. So how do you balance around that? Okay, so if, of course um, I, we're doing it a bit more uh, smartly than just uh, automatically adjusting. Uh, basically, the first few levels are part of the tutorial, so you, they don't get to uh, get better uh, creatures at the beginning. But it's still, what we do is like we give a value for a character's strength, and if they pass like a certain threshold per level, we say, okay, now we do a, you know, twice the damage and twice the HP of the characters. But we are giving him like a few levels run of like feeling like extremely strong. Of course, you want him to, those are the people that you want to feel like the, the most uh, uh, fun of the game because they're paying. Um, so it, it needs to be more, you know, smartly done than just like uh, automatically adjusting. Okay, so thank you again, Ohad.